Today is the, if I can use that word, the climax, the, the peak of Leviticus. Everything we've been studying for the past three, four months serves today, so we can understand it. Today, God designed this special day, and He called it what? The day of, can you see that? Atonement. This idea, this uh, principle of atonement, and we said, what does the word atonement mean? Cover, 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 cover. The word atonement is cover. And I'm going to throw it at the beginning, and I hope we all throw in together. Do you know this day is equivalent to what? Our, our what? Good Friday. I didn't know that until I started to prepare. So Good Friday, our Good Friday that we celebrate every year is taken from this chapter. The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Okay. This is a reminder of what the tabernacle looked like. It is like a soccer field and it has a field, the outside field or the outer thingy or whatever it is called and then there is a building and the building is divided in two things right the most holy and the holy and we talked inside a little bit about that i'm interested in the field outside today do you remember these two pieces of furniture what they were yes one for the sacrifice so it must be a what an altar right they put the sacrifice on it and then what is the other one? It was a big bronze something. It was a basin filled with water. So what is it for? For washing. So these are the two important things. Here is a, a, a picture for a picture for the tent. And you can see the tent is divided, right? So these walls. This is the holy and the inside is the most holy. And the holy is where the table of bread, like you were talking at the back, the menorah or the candle. And here is another altar, but from that altar they only put incense. And so uh, uh, perfumes and incense will come up. Today's story is focused on this inside structure. What is that called? It is called the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. I'm going to pass this around you and I want you to see this arc and the cover, this lid has a lot of importance. I'm going to pass it around so you can see it. This is called the Ark of the Covenant and this idea, this design, this structure, this piece of furniture, whose idea was it? God. It is not Moses. He told them, and we studied it in detail, this is the dimensions, this is how you put the rim, you put the sticks to carry, you put the cover, it has to be wood, it has to be gold from the inside and gold from the outside, and on top of it you can see <coughs> there is two <coughs> arc in, or two angels, you see these two angels at the top? And they, the, God's design was to put the angels with the wings facing upwards and toward each other. And God's design was that the angels and the lid are one piece. You can move only the lid with the two angels. And this is what you can see. This is inside the structure which is called the most holy place. And we talked about the contents of this box or the Ark of the Covenant. Three things inside. Aaron's rod, the manna, and the two tablets that God wrote the commandments on. Excellent. Specifically, I want to zone in with this picture, as you can see this structure you have in your hand, the atonement cover. This cover is very important. Why? Because God said, I will come, if I'm using simple language, simple, I will come and my presence <coughs> is going to be in between the two angels. Almost, I'm going to come and sit Sit on this cover. I'm going to sit right there between the two angels. And this cover is important because it covers the ark on the outside. And they call it the atonement cover. 
because God had love and mercy on his people and didn't punish them he even gave this seat a name anyone remember what it is yeah. the mercy seat excellent so the mercy seat very good I want to go into the details of what God said and everything here as God said number one he said this day of atonement is a very special day it is not like every other day it is one day a year and you are going to come and worship me and if you do things <coughs> correctly I will forgive your sins and the Jewish people were very keen on having forgiveness of their sins unlike many people today they don't care and they're not interested in God or his forgiveness or his work thank God for the churches and the religious people and the believers of today had it not been for them I think God would have ended life much sooner God's idea was that the priest not only the priest the very high priest would come and clean himself first that was the first time the idea of cleaning him in the Bible cleaning and he he wanted to tell them you need to clean your sins but at that time they were still young a young nation and so he told them just clean on the outside the beginning step number lesson number one lesson number two will come later and still today when we come to church to attend Sunday and to have communion God is not interested in our outside cleansiness but he wants what the heart to be clean every time we come to Sunday Every time we come to meet God, and hopefully every day of our life, we're thinking about being clean. Not on the outside, on the inside. Clean my mind from the dirty thoughts. Clean my heart from the ugly feelings and the ungodly feelings that one may have. And so that's why God said you have to put this big structure, a big bronze basin full of water, for the high priest before you come and talk to me before you come and present your sacrifice first clean yourself last time we talked about ways of how we clean ourselves one specific way was the Bible the Bible cleans I don't get it how, how does the Bible clean I tell you the Word of God cleans you from the inside Jesus said to his disciples, you are now clean because of the words I've spoken to you. The, these words clean, you know, clean. And I said the example, and I'll say it again, of a family that didn't know that abortion was wrong. They were about to have an unwanted pregnancy gotten rid of. When they learned through the word of God that this was wrong, <coughs> it cleaned them. And so they decided not to go through there. And they knew and I learned and you will learn when you read through God's Word that it will clean you from sins ah I didn't know if I felt this way it is wrong clean it out if I did this it is wrong clean it out and you clean and clean yourself through the Word of God one of the many ways but I'm interested in it because this is a Bible study must bathe himself with water first and of course this was a birth of the idea of baptism which we have today the birth of the idea of baptism okay so first thing clean with what number two <coughs> do you remember when we talked about the priests and how they dress they had to dress layers first the linen garments and then the blue robe and then the vest and then put the breast piece you remember the breast piece here that had how many jewels 12 jewels and the ephods and then put the turban and the gold turban and the sash made of gold all this was they called the the clothes of glory and honor and it was God's idea that the high priest wears these clothes of glory and honor why who does this high priest represent it represents Christ in God's mind when he was talking to them he knew that he will come incarnate one day and God deserves all the glory and honor 
Many people will challenge you and say, why does your high priest wear such expensive golden clothes? Why does the stick have to be made of gold and all this? Because this is a representation of Christ. Although Christ came in a little manger, when he comes the second time, he will be full force and full power, full of glory and honor. But today, the day of atonement is not a day of glory and honor. It is a day of shame. It is a day of sin that has to be cleansed. It is a day where people feel humbled and feel bad and sad about their sins. Do we feel like this today? Honestly, when I do wrong, when I look the wrong way, when I have ungodly feelings, when I do things wrong, does it even bother us? We've become so numb. But at that time, God wanted the high priest to get rid of all glory and honor, just to keep the inside clothes, just the white linen. That's the only thing he's allowed to wear. And white is a symbol of cleansiness. So, he had to wash this important day, important day. And we're talking about the steps of Yom Kippur. Whereas the high priest washes, then he wears only the white clothes, the linen clothes, not the clothes of glory and honor. Number three, this is God speaking. <coughs> Take animals and sacrifice them for me. How many animals do you see in this diagram? Five. That special day, they had to sacrifice five animals. Some of them are small and some of them are big. Who do you think had to sacrifice the big animal? For what? For the high priest. We remember when we said, the more status you are, your mistake is more countable. So if I make a mistake, no problem. But if Abuna makes a mistake, it's a bigger problem. And if the high priest makes a mistake, it's even a bigger problem. And so the high priest had to take his own sins atoned for so first he will take a bull that animal up there the biggest of them all and this will be the sin for the sin of the high priest i want you to leave the second animal that little ram there and look at the insert where there is two goats those two goats were for the sins of the people so the bull was for the sins of the high priest he had to offer it first clear himself first and it's a reminder that even people in authority sometimes makes mistakes it humbles them down and they too have to go for confession and they too have to ask for God's repentance and it's important for people who are in leadership position to remember that So the bull was for the priest, but the two goats were for the congregation. And both of these are called sin offerings. When they offer it, when they sacrifice the animal, they kill it, they take the blood of it, God will atone or forgive or forget their sins. What about the rams? <coughs> There's two rams here. The ram, you see those two rams? These are called burnt offerings. Remember when we talk about sin offering and burnt offering. Sin is to atone for one's mistakes. Burnt offering was a, an offering that you put on the altar and leave it all to burn. And the Bible says that this was a sweet smelling aroma for God. Now you can't be... You can't offer a sweet-smelling aroma first. First you have to get rid of the sin, then please God. You cannot please God when you remain sinful. And that's the idea why they had to offer first the sin offering first, and then they offer the ram for the atonement. Five animals for the special day. First we're going to talk about the bull. And this is a picture showing Aaron, the high priest, had to offer the biggest of them animals. Offer it means slaughter it. In the outer court, the bull 
was for Aaron's sin. It is the biggest animal and the blood was very important. Let's go through slowly here. And then God told Aaron, now you're not wearing your expensive clothes. You just wear your tunic, the white tunic, simple clothes. And you take in your hand the blood of the animal. You see that? That little that cup that is holding? It is the blood of the animal that was slaughtered. And you take a censer. The censer was made of gold. And you step alone, alone, not anybody else with you, inside the Holy of Holies, inside the place where that ark that you were all saw. So there is blood and there is incense. Every Sunday we talk about this at Mass, right? We talk about the golden censer of Aaron, right? There's a beautiful uh, hymn, hymn that we sing and the deacons will chant about the golden censer of Aaron. Why? What does that censer remind you and me of? Did you know that it is a symbol of something that we cherish in our church today? What is the golden censer a symbol of the church will teach us that it is a symbol of Saint Mary the mother of Christ in what way in what way it is in what way well Saint Mary who is human in nature had God inside of her without destroying her because if you see God you cannot live and in doing that that golden censer represents the mother of Christ and the coal inside of it the fire is a symbol of God of the of the elements of God incarnate fire God said in the Bible that I am a consuming fire our God is a consuming fire and we've seen last Friday when fire came out from the presence of God and burned two priests that did things wrong you can go and review it okay what about the 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 aroma that's coming out what does that represent it smells nice right so it is a sweet smelling aroma it symbolizes the work of Christ that he has done on earth and on the cross it is something sweet for God sweet smelling aroma so Aaron will take the censer and will take the blood and go inside the most holy place I want to tell you that God specified and please open your ears with me specified that the coals the burning coals you take them specifically from this censer from this altar what's that altar called altar of incense you cannot bring coal from the street and use it no you cannot bring fire from anywhere and use it no it has to be taken from this particular altar there were two priests that did otherwise they took their censers and they lighted unauthorized fire and we read about them last Friday they were burnt immediately they were punished by God. Last but not least in this slide, you see this curtain between the most holy and the holy. What is drawn on it? Can you see that drawing? Angels. And so people will tell you and challenge you, why do you have drawings in your church? Do you worship these drawings? Do you worship these idols? And we say, of course not, we don't. But these drawings are actually an idea of God who said, draw on the curtain the picture of two archangels. Here you can see in the insert that Aaron is taking the coal from the altar of incense and putting it inside the censer. And 
I want to specifically say that the coals had to be taken from the altar of incense. And we already spoke about the symbols of this golden censer. Okay. This is a very important slide. I'll take a minute just to talk about it. Here, you can see a few things. Number one, that the golden censer with the incense is so heavy, and Aaron put it down on the floor. Do you see that? In, to tell you, when you read in the Hebrew texts, you see that the high priest was not allowed to enter inside the Holy of Holies looking to the ark. He cannot see, because who was sitting between the angels? It was the presence of God. And so he was supposed to go with his side and not look. And then put, put the golden censer on the floor. And then the incense will come out from it and fill the place. And so when he starts to walk towards the ark, will he see it? No, he can't see it very clearly. And so this smoke that's coming out or the incense that's coming out will cover him so he will not see exactly the presence of God. That's number one. You can see that. Number two, God asked the high priest to take some of the blood. You see how he's taking some of the blood from the plate where he had the blood of the bull and sprinkle it on top of the atonement cover. I want to tell you a little bit more detail. He had to sprinkle it also on the floor of the Holy of Holies. But I'll talk about that later. And so God, who is sitting between the two angels, His presence, when He looks down inside the box and He sees the tablets with all the commandments of God written, he will say, oh, my people broke the commandments. They broke the They must be punished. But then when Aaron sprinkles the blood on the atonement cover, then God's eyes look inside the box through what? Through the blood. Through the blood. This is the message of today. The day of atonement is through the blood. And the blood covers the sins of the people and God's wrath will be kindled down through the blood. And that's why in this church today we say we're all covered by the blood of Christ. The blood, the, the blood is very, very valuable in our theology of understanding. And that's what Christ did. Christ on the cross spilled his blood so that my sins, and I know them very well. Do you know your sins? Do you know yours? So those sins will be forgiven when you offer repentance. You ask me, what sin will God not forgive? I will tell you it is the sin you don't repent of. So any sin I repent about, God will forgive. Yes, will he forgive my lust? Yes, he will. Will he forgive my unfaithfulness? Yes. Will he forgive my sexual sins? Yes. Will he forgive me stealing? Yes. Will he forgive me killing someone? Yes, he will. What sin the blood cannot cover, it is the sin that you don't confess and repent from. Don't let Satan mess with your brain and tell you God cannot forgive my sin. I tell you, it's a lie. You are, it is a big lie. There is no sin that God will not forgive. You repent, He is prepared to forgive. Anything, no matter how evil it is. I don't care what you've done or what I've done. The blood can atone for the sin. Sprinkle the blood. And the question you have there in yellow, can the death of an animal, can the blood of an animal really remove sin? I tell you, of course not. It cannot, not even a thousand animals. But it was lesson number one, for lesson number two will come later. The actual blood of Christ. 
So the high priest, dressed in simple clothes, not glorious clothes, sinful of his own and remembering his own sins, will take the incense, the golden censer of Aaron and the blood of the bull and go very humbly inside the most holy place and put the incense on the floor and then this, the incense will come and cover the whole place so he is hidden from the face of God. And then he will take the plate with the blood and sprinkle it on the atonement cover. There's a little bit more detail. I don't want to go into it. Even on the east side of the cover. But we can touch that. Touch base that later. That was what he would do with the bull for his own sins. This slide shows you. Now he can come out and atone for the sins of his congregation. Now he can come out and atone for the sins of his congregation. You too have a congregation. You say, where is my congregation? I tell you, your home, your family is your congregation. Maybe we cannot atone for our own mistakes. And forget others or in another way you cannot ask for other people when you yourself are living in sin it will not work first we have to get rid of our sin and ask for forgiveness for us before we ask for forgiveness of others so for the congregation God said this is God's requirement take two male goats This is God's idea to get a goat. Why a goat? Why not a tiger? Why not a lion? Why not some big strong animal? Because they don't really represent Christ. A lamb is what represents Christ. He is a lamb, a simple innocent lamb. And it had to be a clean animal and we talked about that before. Why male? Because Christ will come as a male. And by the way, just when you read the Hebrew text, you find very interesting stuff. They had to... So, who would pay for the bull of the high priest? It had to come out of his own pocket. His own salary. He had to buy his own animal to atone for himself. What about for the congregation? It comes out from the general bank of the sanctuary for everybody and the priests that were allocated to go and buy the two goats they used to tell them please buy two male goats preferably same size not one big one small same age and buy them at the same time and they both had to be with no blemish because Christ was sinless with no blemish in him okay and then what? So now we're talking about the sins of the congregation. We've finished the sins of the high priest and how it was atoned for through the blood. It's all about the blood. So God said to Aaron, listen to me. You bring the two goats and I want you to cast a lot on them. What? What does that mean? He said, yeah, you have to separate one goat from the other goat. How? Which one? This or this said, no, cast a lot. And if you read the Hebrew text, you see that they used to bring two stones. And <coughs> the high priest would stand and bring his two assistants beside him. And then they will say, here are the two stones, and they throw them. Let's say one stone was black, one was white. And they say, if it goes to the white stone or the black stone, it will be one of the goats. And the other will be for the other goat. And sometimes they'll get confused, oh, which one was which? And so they decided to tie a ribbon to their horn. They will tie a red ribbon to goat number one, and they will tie a green ribbon. It was actually scarlet, but for this color, they tie a green ribbon on the horn of the other goat, so they can tell the difference between them. That reminds us of 
casting lots over the clothes of Jesus Christ. So these two goats, what are they? <coughs> I want to tell you that you are looking at Christ. You say, I don't see him. I see two goats. Well, these are Christ. And we will see in a moment. And God said, I want you to take goat number one. Take goat number what? Number one. And please slaughter it. Just like you did with the bull. And you take the blood of that goat and you go inside and you take the incense and you sprinkle over the atonement cover. And when the presence of God comes on that day, they look down, they see the broken commandments, but they see it through the blood of the animal. And so the sins are atoned for. You can call this the atonement goat. Easy, right? I, I, it really is not that, but I made it sound like this to make it simple. And it was for the people, the congregation, the Israelite community, the sin offering of them, all of them, atoned by the atonement goat which is the mark number one which is marked in red and so the wrath of God will be kindled down because of the blood that was taken from the animal that was slaughtered and that goat is a symbol of Christ Actually, you can see the insert there. It says that Christ was both goats. And I'll say about the second, boat in a mo and the second goat in a moment. By the way, when the bull was slaughtered, where does the body of the bull go? It goes on top of the altar. Because it's going to be a sin offering. It will be burned. And where does the, blood, where does the body of the goat number one go? After it is slaughtered, <coughs> they will take the blood and you know what they will do with the blood? Only the high priest alone, alone, not anybody else with him. And the body of the goat will also go on the burnt offering to be burnt. As a burnt offering? No. As a sin offering. Nothing pleasing here. This is not pleasing. This is a day of shame and remorse. Did you know that these steps, the high priest may forget something, may do something wrong. You know what happens if the high priest does a wrong move or says the wrong word or takes the wrong blood or instead of sprinkling seven times, sprinkle eight times? It's a big problem. He will be severely punished. And so when you read the Hebrew and the Jewish text, they say they used to sit with the priest for one month before that day going through practice. This is what you do, this is how you change, and this is how you wash. And he had to wash his hand and his feet and his body, and this is how you close, and this is how you take the blood and you put it. It sounds simple today, but at that time it was much more complex. And he will go alone into the Holy of Holies. Do you think he will be scared? Of course, he will be scared. What I th read was amazing to me is that the night before the Day of Atonement, the high priest would not sleep. Why he would not sleep? <laughs> I would say it, and I think we will get it. Because male secretions that may happen during sleep can make you, what? Unclean. And you can't do this. So the whole day is tossed over, is messed up. Simply because something natural in the body of the high priest took place. And so they will have that high priest not sleep the night before. Just for that particular point. So the high priest will get ready, wash, get dressed, slaughter the bull, take the blood of the bull for his own sin, and take... The incense, go inside, sprinkle, put the incense, come outside, and then take the blood of the goat, goat number one, the atonement goat, and sprinkle, and take the incense, and then come out. To tell you the truth, 
This was done in four steps. So I'll say them and now you will get them. He will take first the incense and go by the side through the curtain, put it inside and the smoke will fill the whole place. Right? And then he will go out. Take the blood of the bull and come inside again and sprinkle it. And then take the blood and the incense and come out. And then go slaughter the goat and take the incense again inside and put it so that it will fill the whole place. And then he will go outside, take the blood of the goat and come inside and sprinkle it. So how many times he had to go inside the Holy of Holies that day? Four times. And this was the atonement goat for the people's sin. This goat number one. And he will do with it exactly the same as he would do with the blood of the bull. We talked about that. By the way, one part I didn't fail to mention is that God asked him also to bless or anoint the horns of the altar with the blood. So what makes the altar sacred is the blood on it and the body of Christ, not the other way around. People think that the blood and body of Christ are sacred because they are on the altar. I tell you, no, it's the other way around. It is the blood and body that makes the altar a sacred altar. When Adam and Eve sinned, when they made a mistake and they covered themselves with the leaves, God said, no, the leaves are not good. You have to be covered with sheep. And God personally took the duty of slaughtering a sheep and cover Adam with the sheepskin and then slaughtering another sheep and cover Eve with the sheepskin. Do you remember this in Genesis? This is a time when one animal was good enough for how many people? One people. One person. Then we come to the story of the Passover. When God said to Moses, listen, every family, you take one lamb, you slaughter it, you put the blood on the doorposts, I'm going to pass over that family. What? So now one animal is good enough for how many? One family. Today we are learning that one goat can atone for all the community. So one animal for what? One community. All this lesson number one, lesson number two, lesson number three. So we can come to lesson number four. One Jesus for what? The whole world. And this in the theology of Leviticus is called progressive atonement. Progressive. You progress. You go from one level to the other. And finally... After you have done the atonement with the bull for the high priest, with the goat for the whole community, and the sin offering is given, then you're forgiven. Then you can offer the burnt offering, which will be an aroma pleasing to the Lord. Honestly, it is hard for us to please God while we are still drenched in sin and not repenting. Nothing pleases God more than a repentant heart. A poor and a contrite heart, O Lord, you will not despise. That's what we read in the book of Psalms. And if you bring a sinner to Christ to repent, you've done a fantastic thing. If you've influenced someone in your life to come to know Christ, and repent and take him as his savior and accept the faith, this is a fantastic thing. This is the aroma that is pleasing to the Lord. Offer repentance. Repentance. And repentance comes with what? Prayer. When was the last time you sat with God and you offered repentance? And I hear, I'm not using the word confession. Confession is before who? The priest. But repentance is between you and God. When was the last time I sat down with God to repent and with my father of confession 
to confess. The church teaches that we should do this every... The classic, the textbook teaching is what? What is the law? Every month. Every month is what the church fathers have told us. It may sound dull to your ears, but that's what it is. I know of people who go for every six months. I know of people who go every year. I know of people who go every ten years. It's up to you. You and your... How important is your spiritual life? How much do you care about God? Remember the song we were singing, The Heart. He wants you. I give you my heart. That means we confess and repent every night. I know of people that every night before they go to bed, they have what is known today as quiet time. Quiet time. Quiet time is not a time when you clean your nails or when you fix the kitchen. This is not the quiet time. Quiet time with God is when you judge yourself. Judge ourselves. Okay. So are we clear so far? Aaron, the high priest, has presented two major offerings. The bull for his sin offering the goat for the community. And then they presented their burnt offerings. And there's two of them, one for Aaron and one for the community. We are left with one thing. We are left with goat number two. Goat number two. Goat number two. God said to Aaron, goat number two, the one that has the green ribbon on the horn, Goat number two, please, I want you to put your hand on top of its head. We talked about this before. And confess all <coughs> the sins of the community. I want to say that again. I'm going to put my hand on top of the head of the goat and confess all the sins of the community. You think this took how long? Five minutes? Twenty minutes? Two hours? Three hours? Ten hours? It took a long time. It took a long time. And how would Aaron know the sins of the community? Because they used to tell him their sins. In other words, they used to what? Confess their sins to the high priest. That's where the idea of confession in our church today comes from. I have missed a slide or two. I wanted to tell you that even Aaron himself, when he offered the bull on behalf of him and his family, he used to confess his sins on the head of the bull. And then God told him, after you confess the sins of everyone, all these sins will come from you and the community onto that goat. And then what? God told him, I want you to send this goat out in the desert. Away, 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 away. Let it escape. Let it run away from you. And that's why they called it the escape goat or the scapegoat. Actually, the name of it is written beside the first picture. You see, it is called the Az Azel Goat. That's the name written in our Bibles. The translation of that word is the Escape Goat. Run, run away. The Escape Goat. Or Az Azel. And that is a Hebrew word for send away. Get lost. Get out. Send that goat away. What about the first goat? When well, the first goat was slaughtered and the blood was spilled to offer atonement for the people. Okay, at that part I get and we all get. What about the second goat? Why is that necessary? God wanted to tell his community, you see, that goat is going to carry all your sins and the sins will be lost. They will go out in the desert, away from you. Does that remind us of any verse in the New Testament? or in the Old Testament about our sins and the sins of us? Yes, it reminds us of these verses. Look, in the book of Hebrews, yellow down there, Hebrews 8, I will forgive the wickedness, I will remember their sins 
no more. They have been carried away. They have lost in the wilderness that escape goat, which also represents Christ. It tells me, as it says here, as the east is far from the west, so God has removed our transgressions from us. I say that again. As the east is far from the west, so God has removed our transgressions from us. Away! It's been sent away. So not only atoned for, but it has been erased. It has been removed. It has been forgotten. It has, I don't remember it. And you, you are sanctified as if you have never sinned. I don't remember it. That is what the value of the escape goat or scapegoat as you can see in this. And Jesus was both goats. He was the atonement goat and he was the scapegoat. What you can't find in our Bible but is beautiful. I can't stop from sharing it to you in the Hebrew text. They say that one year, listen to me, the scapegoat came back. What? Came back? Yeah, it, it got lost in the desert for a few months and then it came back. That's a disaster. You know when people see that escape goat go away, they are relieved. They say, oh God, you have forgotten our sins of this last year. But then when it came back, it means that the sins are still there. And so, although not written in the Bible, they have changed their custom. They said, we are going to plan this scapegoat as follows. And it's important, the Azael goat. We're talking today about the Azael goat. We are going to assign a priest who will take that goat and walk with it outside the camp for one mile. And then there will be a small hut in the desert waiting. In that hut there will be another priest. He will take the goat and walk with it another mile to another hut that they have already built with another priest waiting in it. And a third and a fourth up until 11 miles away from the community. And then from the 11th hut, there is a priest who will take the goat yet one more mile. So how many miles in total? 12 miles. And take it to a high rock. High rock, very high. And listen to me. And then push it off the cliff. So it will what? Die. They don't want to see this thing ever again. And when the priest that sent it off to die sees it completely dead, he will then hold a stick and light a fire. And, a stick. and so the guy who is a mile away will see what? The fire. So he too will light another fire. And so the guy before him will see it and he will light a all the way back until who? The first hut. That's only a mile away from the community. And once they see that fire, they cheer and loud. And they're very happy and joyful that their sins have been completely removed from them. They will never see it again. They will never be angry again. This is the story, my beloved, of the escape goat. And now we understand that Christ was both goats. I want to tell you, and I'm coming to the end, that this was not a happy day for them. Or I may say it ends in happiness. But you are on the day where they see the priest that is going to go inside and is going to offer the sacrifice and the blood. Will God accept it? Will God not accept it? Will God atone for our sins or will God not atone for our sins? Until he comes out, they're having a hard day. God said in this particular day of atonement, Yom Kippur, please deny yourselves. Deny yourself that day. What does deny yourself mean? What does that mean? It means no eating, no drinking, no sleeping, no relationship, no fun, no activity. It is very similar to how Christians do it in Good Friday, where we come early to church and we put everything behind us. Deny ourselves from everything. That is the Yom Kippur day, the day of the atonement. And he told them, you have to do this 
on the seventh month of the year, on the tenth day. This was God's timing to celebrate, if I may use the word celebrate, Yom Kippur. And here you can see that the high priest is sitting down and all around him they're going through the rehearsal and the recital of the steps of what to do and what not to do. Reminding him that he cannot sleep that day. Two more slides. This is one of them. This is a comparison between Aaron, the high priest, and Jesus, our high priest. Aaron, the high priest on the left, and Christ, our ultimate high priest. Number one, God said that Aaron had to do this job with who? Alone. Because he knew that Christ will come and die on the cross. What? Alone. He will do the job alone. He can do it all. Number two, Aaron was a priest who presented the sacrifice. But look on, on Jesus' side. It says that Jesus was both the priest and the sacrifice. He said, I offer my life, I have the power, I have the will to offer my life and take it back. On the left, Aaron needed to present a sin offering for himself. Jesus did not do that, no need. He was sinless, there was no need for him to offer. He died for our sins, not for himself. Although God put on him all our sins, yet inside of him there was no sin. On the left we read that Aaron needed to do Yom Kippur every year. Which month? The seventh month. Which day? The tenth day. Every year. So every year they had to kill an animal to sacrifice and atone for the sins of that year. Every year, repeat, 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 repeat. But for Christians and believers, we believe that Jesus did it how many times? Once. No need to repeat. And we said that this animal was for all the community. But Jesus died for the whole world. Yes, if you are listening to me, for the whole world. For everyone who accepts. Everybody who wants to accept. Everyone is welcome. The last slide. We talked about this in our questions through the Christ. We accepted redemption, forgiveness, justification, and sanctification. How are the Jews celebrating Yom Kippur today? You tell me. How are they atoning for their sins today? They cannot. They cannot. They have the sacrifice, but they don't have the altar they don't have the temple there is no temple for them it is a problem there is no temple as such there is no sacrifice <laughs> today the jews celebrate these three primary holidays i'm talking about the average jew not the orthodox jew that has more details Purim, and one day we're going to celebrate, the, uh, read about it. This is the book of Esther, where God's people were delivered. And they rejoice and celebrate. It's a happy feast for them. And they celebrate it in mid-March. In the middle of September, according to the Jewish calendar, that's the, the seventh day, they celebrate the Day of Atonement, or what they call Yom Kippur. Or in Arabic... What is Yom? Yom. And Kippur comes from Kapur or Kafara. Kafara or covering. Kapur. Yeah, where the day of atonement. That's where the name comes from. And we <coughs> read about it from, not Exodus, my, forgive me, it is from Leviticus. And also they celebrate Hanukkah and we talked about Hanukkah previously. The Jews, my beloved, have no temple. There is no temple. They cannot celebrate their Yom Kippur. 
question, and I got this for, for us so that you can see from Korbanot, which is a very popular Hebrew website that I lean up, uh, about when I want to understand. Question number one, do Jews offer sacrifices today? The answer is no. The Jews cannot offer any kind of animal sacrifice, nor have they offered any sacrifice since the second century. That's when their temple was destroyed. When did the Jews stop offering sacrifice? The sacrifice stopped 70 years AD, when the Romans destroyed the temple in Jerusalem. We stopped offering sacrifices because we do not have a proper place to offer them. Do Jews want to resume the sacrifices? Yes, they want to, but there is no place to offer it. I want to stop at this for the last comment. So how do Jews obtain their atonement without a sacrifice? How? How? The answer we get from them is forgiveness is obtained through what? Repentance. Which is very contrary to the Christian Orthodox or the general Christian belief. Forgiveness is obtained through the blood of Jesus Christ. It has to be through the blood of Jesus. And here you can, it's interesting, you see the common between us and the Jewish wording. Forgiveness of sin through repentance, prayer. And what is that? That last word? Tazdeka. Or Tazdeka. And they translate it into charity, which is what we say. In summary, Today, we learned about the important Yom Kippur Day. And it exactly equates to the day of Good Friday, where our Christ spilled His blood, so our sins are atoned for, and they are also forgiven. Can your sins be forgiven? If you don't believe in Christ, big question. Our faith, our Bible tells us that there is only one way. One way to salvation. One way for forgiveness. And that is Jesus Christ. And that's why congregations out there are very keen to proclaim God's word. To people who don't know it. You have a co-worker that you love in your workplace, you really love and care about. I tell you, you're lying if you don't show him Christ. How can you love someone knowing that in your faith his eternity is questioned or her eternity is questioned? We are the light of the world. You know what that means? That light shines to the world. Please, remember this lesson today, that without Christ and His blood, there is no forgiveness. It's not an animal, it is Christ. He has done it once and for all. Reach out to the people around you. Reach out to them and tell them about Christ and His magnificent work on the cross. This is the lesson that we learned today from... Yom Kippur.